Bonjour guys, this may or may not be an interesting video. I have a 2007 Skoda Fabia, 1.2 petrol. I don't know, we records and that we think there might be a uh, kind of bit of information for people to, to see or to I don't know, educate themselves from or become wiser from or share, I think, our information more so than uh, anything else. I like watching interesting stuff myself from any of the lads. Um, okay. 1752302 sensor heating bank one sensor one short to ground P115 1115 short to ground and then we have 1752502 sensor heating circuit bank one sensor two so the same type code only for sensor two uh, short to ground P1117 short with ground Again, okay, here's where we're standing. That's our codes we have. So we might have a little look at live data while we're here, just to see. Might not be of any use to us. Maybe we're better off to go out and have a look directly at the sensor and just see what the heating elements are doing. Probably just, well, fingers crossed, there might only be a fuse or something gone. I'm gonna customize this and we just see what we can see. Oh, baby, go. There we go. Deselect all. Nothing we can see here to do with uh, O2 sensors. I suppose sometimes I should be looking through the actual camera. As in looking at you can see the reflection of the camera rather than at the other thing. We'll go out and have a look, okay? Talk soon. Okay, so we're going to um, O2 sensor control valve voltage. I can't, I can't actually say anything about heating elements on it, so we're going to go to um, let's have a little fast look. So two sensor voltage there anyway. I can't see open loop or closed loop or any of them, but I'm potentially going to be saying that we're probably, it's relatively cold start now, it's going to be in open loop until the actual car heats the lambda sensors from the exhaust gas. And then when they get up to temperature, it's actually going to, going, to, going to go into closed loop. This might actually, the live data here might be better on OBD. But anyway, neither here nor there. We don't need to go looking at this crack too much. They're not um, very small voltages here. You can see on sensor 2, we have 0.9 of volt. Point, sorry, 3.9 of volt. And down here then on sensor 1, I have 0.5. Okay. Staying at this point, then we're probably in in open loop. We'll get out to the center and have a look and see what we have at the heating element. Okay, we should have a. I'm suggesting that what just from familiarity, we're going to have a 12 volt power feed. I forgot to look at the wiring diagram, and then we're going to have a pulse width modulated ground to actually heat the element. That's what I'm suggesting that we're going to see before we go out here. Okay, we we'll go and have a scout. Okay, I'm just at a. This car was taking over there for a few minutes while I was. Doing other jobs, changing tires and stuff on the yoke. Um, so it got quite warm. I suppose that idle wouldn't be getting wicked hot, but like, we pull it in um, inside there now, and you can see there's activity, but very, very small. We have a peak of 0.5 and a minimum of 0.27. That's on the second lambda sensor, uh, first lambda sensor here. This could be uh, broadband. Could be. Here, there. When I see this two volts here. And this spike. Anyway, just to show you what I have, just when I turn around the yard and pull it in. Okay guys, I realise the fan is going and the engine is running and sometimes it can be hard to hear me with that, but we have, it's only a four wire sensor. So back out so you can hear me again. Four wires, okay? With two, two whites, a grey and a black. I can't remember off the top of my head whether it's the grey or the black are going to be the signal wire, which I don't mind about right now. What I'm concerned about are the two whites. 
two white wires are going to be part of the heating uh, element inside the lambda sensor. As I said there, it's only a standard zirconia or so uh, lambda sensor, not the broadband. So we'll go to the back probe here at the center, but then I don't know the makeup of, what, of what's inside in the guts of it and how far in it could be before I get something to get a connection with. So I'm going uh, to following the wire back down. I'm going to just at the first sensor purely because it's the easiest one to get at right now. We have the issue with both of them. Down here is where the block connector is. And I'm not speaking while I'm down at the block connector. You can see the two white wires. They're the furthest forward wire and the one back in the way. I am after back probing the second one. Take. Just make sure I'm in the right place while I'm holding the camera. The fan is starting to go there. So right, plug in the wire. Sorry, plug in my back probing pin. We've just seen there that I have 0.015 volts. If I take out my pin, I get my pin. It's all over the place so it's just giving me confirmation of continuity i don't know which or what i should have at which wire but i believe i should have a 12 volt power feed and a pulse switch ground i'm not getting a scope why am i not getting a scope I'm not getting a scope just purely that's the, the i don't know if you can see that i'm back probing the forward or forward wire at this point in time okay Okay. And there again with the same forward to point two. Wire pulled out. Okay. So the wiring diagram is it forward. Okay guys, in looking at the wiring diagram and what I have here are two lambda sensors. So you can see it they are heated oxygen sensor two and this is heated oxygen sensor one, okay? Right. Heating element then is that little what I call it, wiggly bit running through it, okay? So that's the actual heating element of it. Now if I look, before that joining there is where I would have had my white wires, my two generic white wires, both these. After that block connector, we get into the, the OE color of the wiring, okay? So when I back probed both of these white wire, wires I had, very low little or no voltage okay so i should have had voltage on some of them coming from as you can see here fuse f31 that fuse is actually feeding power down as you can see both these red and blue wires down to both of the heating elements in both of the lambda sensors all right we hadn't haven't got power here the reason we had very low voltage was going to be coming through this ground wire and just show actually no I'm calling that a ground wire it shouldn't be it's actually a pulse width modulated wire coming from the engine ECU all right so that's the engine ECU there ECM that's pulse width modulated being pulled to ground so sorry apologies there it's not an actual ground wire it is being pulled to ground but controlled in order to give us a certain amount of a controlled amount of heat at the heating element in the exhaust right but when we come back up here that's not of our concern right now what I want to see is I want to see 12 volts coming down some of these wires while it's not being pulled to ground by this wire we should have voltage in some of these wires that we had been back probing there a second ago okay right you've seen that now I'm good to the car multimeter still thrown there you saw it's f31 and it was on the fascia fuse box okay when i come out here you may or may not be able to see this i've seen been out here a second ago just have a look right i don't know can you will you be able to see numbers there no sorry this is me trying to see if the camera and it won't it won't pick it up. F31. 
is there. You can see the way there's a pin right here. Nothing in them, so they might be empty. There is a, what would you call it? A, a harder to see pin internal in it, but that's F31 here. There should be, you can actually see it there kind of nearly. I see 30 underneath the blue fuse. I see 29 underneath the red one. I'm not going to move the light because you can see it there. Now, when I look at, I'm going to show just to, for the, whoever is going to be, if anyone's getting caught on this, when I look at my fuse cover, just don't get caught on this. When I look at this, number, I'll put it on the ground actually. Then I'll do that. Number 31 nearly shows and reads like it's on the top, but it is not. If you can see three stacks of fuses here, we come back to our fuse box, we have three stacks of fuses here. So the actual way we're going to be looking at the fuse box cover is like that, and 31 is here, but it's upside down in the printing on this thing, okay? This is where you start questioning, hmm, has someone just been silly and doing a generic piece of work with maybe a cigarette lighter or something or a power source that they're blown and playing with fuses? I'm going to put a fuse in here, in this section here. This is number 31. I'm going to mark it with a little bit of a yellow marker so you can actually see it and then we'll have a look outside and just see. What I did bring out with me here is a test light. While the car is running, is there more to this or is it just is it just right so we have nothing at that pin Ooh, okay second pin we have a power so in theory we're short fuse here i'm going to stick in that fuse and see what happens and we go look at our multimeter again okay guys live on camera will we have a blow it's 10 amp, 10 amp fuse meant to be in there which you saw on the other data i'm a devil i like i always like a little bit of a clear so apologies on that that's what we're doing i'm putting in the 15 amp because i like Tastes like. It's like. Ooh, new. No. Oh, nice. Sorry, it was just uh, hard, hard to back probe or hard to. I wasn't getting into the pin there, right? Okay. okay. So we are. We have power coming through the fuse, coming through the fuse, and then we go back out and we'll have a little fast look. I'll the bonnet and just see what we have. We don't have a back probe and pin in anywhere. Again, we're going to get caught with this noise of this car. So, multimeter, put in there we can. See what we've done it in one second, then we'll try back probing here. I think that could be running low. Ooh. Okay, the battery voltage coming through here. I think my multimeter is beeping because of that's on the opposite where I have point two volts, which I'm just out of leaving it go. So I have point two of a volt. I'm going to suggest the multimeter is not fast enough. I don't need a scope. I don't think I do here anything. We're done. Um, point two of volt on the the second one in, and as you saw there, we have twelve volts. Always be careful. <laughs> Fans and this to get going. We had 12 volts on the first wire. So, right. I'm happy enough at this point that we've found the problem. Live. The data actually is here. Yeah, Asher, just the minute we put in the fuse, I have, I have something start to happen at my first lambda sensor. Kind of a zero to one volt is what I'm going to be looking for. Which, which we have 0.2 to 0.8, lads will say, but just as a glimpse, 0 to 1 volt. So now we're back. Switching back, working, but what has caused this? Starting to switch up here again, should never be, this is after the cat, second sensor, should never be as high in amplitude as the first one. That's actually monitoring 
the air to fuel mixture that's coming in and then send an information to PCM and the PCM is lean, weak, lean, sorry, lean, rich, lean, rich, lean, rich. It's chasing after, after stoichiometric all the time. But that's what's making your car run better. This is what's kind of checking the actual catalytic converter to see how it's performing, how it's acting. So I'm happy enough with that. But now what happened here? You can turn off these lights sometimes with the big kind of a gear. What happened here? You'll be wondering, I'm going to suggest that to fix. You'll be wondering, was it only someone playing? Is it someone that actually, as a mechanic, you'd always have this little doubt. Someone just do this. Someone tried to trick me up or I know they don't, but where did the fuse go? Why was there no fuse in there? We'll go back with clear codes. Just make sure that we're going to, um, um, it'll tell me that I probably should have the car stopped, but. Now that's the first time that I've cleared codes, so I haven't cleared them prior to this. Didn't know if they were, would have been stuck in there as a hard fault, but uh, I didn't record or didn't show you. But anyway, here we're back. We have no fault codes at this point in time, and you've just seen that the Lambda sensors are doing what they're meant to do. So look, not a whole lot of interesting stuff, nearly too easy. You question, ooh, why, who, what's happening here? But anyway, done, care fixed. Talk to the customer, see if there's any reason that someone might have been in our fuses and hand it back to him. Unless he tells me it has blown before and there's a reason for it. Right now, I'm not going to go delving in until I talk to the customer. Time is money, so get it done, talk to him. And if he's happy and has been that fuse, we'll throw it out. Guys, thanks for watching. Hope it uh, helps someone and please like and subscribe if it's any good to you. Thank you. Okay, guys, I met them out for a 10 or 15 minute drive and we still have no fault codes. The, I was talking to the girl or the lady and she said that she hasn't had um, any of that fuses. Said that it's on with a good while, a couple of months, and that she doesn't really know what the story is. So we're presuming that someone maybe pulled out a fuse and put it back in in the wrong place. I've seen that a couple of times. Problems where lads can't find things, ABS pumps and all that crack and check fuses and they put it in the wrong spot right beside. So look, we're saying that we're, we're done and classing this as just a human error, okay? Guys, thanks for watching. Talk again soon in the next cartoon or whatever it may be. Peter Kennedy signing out. Bye, boys.